sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord, you're
me say. Good evening. Welcome to San Francisco Temple Friday Night Bible Study. Welcome to each and every one that may be listening on live stream, YouTube, or however they may be listening. I do thank and praise God for being here this evening, first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, and to our bishop and pastor, Luther J. Blackwell, and to each and every one that may be listening. This is the day in an evening that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. And now we're going to have scripture reading. It's coming from Psalms 149. And it reads as thus. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song in his praises in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in dance. Let them sing praises unto them with the tambourine and harp. For the Lord take pleasure in his peoples. He will beautify the meek with their salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their being. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I have read to you Psalms 149 verses 1 through 6. Praise the name of the Lord. And now we are going to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you this evening for blessing each and every one of us to be tuned in this evening to our Friday night Bible study. Thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you anoint me to speak and teach this Friday night Bible study in a way that is pleasing to you. That souls may get saved, healed, delivered, and set free. And that each and every one that watching or maybe listening, be encouraged to be a greater witness in the kingdom of God. May the Lord have a blessing of his word. I read to you Psalms 149. And we just thank and praise God for his word. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Our lesson this evening is coming from Psalms 33, verses 1 through 22. Our theme for this lesson is praise to the creator and preserver of the universe. These are four things that this song in chapter 33 is talking on. In verse 1. It is talking about who should praise the Lord. Verse 2 through 4, it talks about how we should praise and worship the Lord. Verse 5 through 19, it talks about why we should praise and worship the Lord. Verse 20 through 22, talks about what will happen when we praise the Lord and worship him. The leader called them to worship. The choir led the assembly in praising the Lord. In all close with the affirmation of faith in verse 20 and 22. It is likely that their praises was caused by the nation victory over an enemy. Except for the prayer in verse 22. 
The entire psalm is devoted only to praise and form a helpful premiere on praise. There appear a link between the first verse of the preceding one and both the writer urges the righteous, the one that is have a right relationship with God to rejoice in the Lord. But this song elaborates the theme by telling why it is appropriate for the righteous to praise him. It is rather a peaceful scene with Israel dwelling in safety and in the Lord acknowledged as the universal creator and sovereign Lord. This psalm thus belong to the Christ kingdom. The word of God acknowledge us to first seek ye the kingdom of God in his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Starting with verse 1 which is talking about who should praise the Lord. In verse 1 says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. It is the righteous one that should praise the Lord. Righteous mean acting in accordance with divine or moral law. Free from guilt or sin. Being right with God. For praise is commonly, which means having a pleasing appearance for the upright, the one that's walking upright with the Lord. Now this verse parallels with chapter 32, verse 11. It reminds us that only those who are righteous by faith in obedience in their walk because without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him faith come by hearing hearing the word of God now faith is the suffering of things hoped for in the evidence of of things not seen. So we must put our faith in the Lord. It is fitting and proper for those who have experienced the grace of God and his forgiveness to praise the Lord. He is creator and he cares for each and every one of us. He is the Lord of all and watches over us. We are his people and the sheep in his pasture. In Psalms 1, chapter 100, verse 3, he has redeemed us and we belong to him. We are bought with a price. No wonder the worship leader exhorted the people to rejoice. Praise, play instruments, and sing to the Lord. A sinner who has been saved by God's grace ought to have no problem praising the Lord. Starting with verse 2 through 4, it talks about how we should praise the Lord. In verse 2 says, praise the Lord with the harp. You can sing praises unto him with the sorcery and with string instruments of ten strings. Praise means to glorify God in expression of his approval, to worship, to exalt his holy name. And Psalms 34 and 1 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise in the Lord. Now both voices and instruments are used in public worship in the sanctuary. According to verse 3, the voices was to be shouting for joy in the spirit and the joyfulness of the Lord. The instruments should be played with skill and played in a way that is the very best that they can play. And verse 3 says, sing unto them, him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Now the new song is the song of redemption. It follows the forgiveness of sin. It belongs to all that have been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said without the shedding of blood there is no remission. But this song will be sung in a very special way to the redeemed Israel at the outset of the millennium in Revelation chapter 14 verse 3. And verse 4 said, For the word of the Lord is right. God's word is right. He's not a man that he can lie, neither the son of man, that he has to repent. And all his work are done in truth. It is only the truth that can make us free. The word of God. In the beginning, it was the word. In the word was with God. In the word was God. In Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. The word of God is very powerful. Now, the mention of God's word in verse 4 reminds us that by knowing the word of God, we get better acquainted with the God of the word. Creation reveals his existence, power, wisdom, and majesty. But the revelation in scripture tells us about his mercy. God's mercy is very important and grace in his wonderful plan of salvation. Now the mentioning of his word is right. He is a faithful God, a God of truth, a God of righteousness, justice, and goodness. God's throne is built on righteousness and justice. Started with verse 5 through 19, talks about why we should praise and worship the Lord. Verse 5 said, He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of his goodness and of the Lord. Number one, we should praise God because of his goodness. God is good to each and every one of us. We should praise God because for his wisdom and his counsel. We should praise God for saving us from our sin. His goodness and mercy. In Romans 2 and 4 says, O despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance in long suffering, not knowing that it is the goodness of God that lead us to repentance. God's goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. Now to the eyes of faith, the earth is full of his goodness. His glory, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, 
in his praise in Habakkuk 3 and 3. And one day will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord in Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. The beauty of God's character should be from his people's song of praise and thanksgiving. Unless our worship is on the character of God, we have ignored him. And verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord will the heaven made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. We also worship the Creator in praise for his wonderful word. Out of nothing, he created everything by the power of his word. The word that created the universe also holds it together. It sustains it. In Hebrew, the first chapter, verse 3. Second Peter, the third chapter, verse 5 through 7. The breath of his mouth refers to the Holy Spirit of God. In Genesis, the first chapter, verse 1 and 2. The breath and spirit of the same word in Hebrew. Hosts include the stars in planet. Verse 7 said, He gathered the water of the sea together as heat. He laid up the depth and storehouse. In verse 7, takes us back to Genesis, the first chapter, verse 9 and 10. When you see the heaven above the earth and the sea below, you must marvel at the handiwork of God and stand in awe at the power of God's word. It's so powerful. And verse 8 says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. This word awe means it's a feeling of reverence, respect, mixed with fear and wonder. Now in any case, God is so great and greatly to be praised. That all mankind reverence him, should reverence him, and show the deepest respect for him and honor. His word was a sound energy, which became matter by his command. All the creation came into being at the word of God. In verse 10 and 11 says, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. And verse 11 said, The counsel of the Lord stand forever. The thought of his heart to all generations. This word counsel means the advice he gives. The plan of action. In our praise, we must thank God for his wonderful counsel. People with authority make decisions that affect the destiny of our nation. And when God isn't permitted to rule, then he overrules. For his will shall be accomplished. He can turn the policy and plan of the nation to nothing. It's found in Isaiah, the 8th chapter, verse 18. The will of God for his children come from the heart of God and is an expression of God's love for them and for each and one of us. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him that the world may be saved. He that believe it in God is not condemned, but he that believe it not is condemned already, because he has not believed it in the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light coming into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their eyes was dim. So there is no cause for us to be alarmed or afraid. And verse 12 said, Blessed is the nation who God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. This word chosen means one who is the object of choice or divine favor or elect person. In Ephesians 1 and 4 says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should live holy and without blame in him in love. The word of God said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that ye should show forth the praises of God who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. In verse 13, said the Lord, looking from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. Now we worship the Lord because the assurance of his divine care. Not only does he keep his eyes on his individual saints, 1 Peter 3 and 12, but he watches all the son of man in all the world. He knows what the saints are doing and what the sinners is doing to the saints. The Bible said, for the eyes of the Lord is in every place beholding the evil and the good. God sees everything. And verse 14 said, from places, the place of habitation, he looked upon all the inhabitants of the earth. The word translated look in verse 14 means to gaze intensely as God watches. He sees not only the action of the body, but the thoughts, the intent of the heart. In Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12, he made the human heart himself. He understands it better than we do. At Jeremiah 17, verse 9. And he knows our motives. And Psalms 139 said, Thou knowest my downsetting in uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts of all. Oh, this knowledge of God, David said, is just too high. I can't attain it. It's too wonderful for me. And verse 15 said, He fashioned their heart alike. He consider all their work. Fashion means to mold, to construct a fix. He fashioned their heart alike by this. It meant that the heart of all men are equally fashioned by the Lord. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and like rivers of water he turneth whatsoever way he will. The king's heart, as well as the beggar's heart, he consider all their work. God does not simply view the act of men from heaven. He ponders it and judges them as well. And verse 16 said, There is no king saved by the multitude of hosts. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Verse 17 said, a horse is a vain thing for safety. Vain means something worthless or something of no real value. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. And now the king's heart, it is just like any other man. 
And no nation can win a war just because it has a big army and a large supply of weapons and ammunition. At the Exodus, God looked down at the great Egyptian army and destroyed it. In Exodus 14, chapter verse 24, God delivered his people from danger and death, and he kept them alive when times are difficult. Today in our life, we are living in difficult times. But nevertheless, if we put our faith and trust in the name of the Lord, God will bring us through just like he did in ancient times. Why? Because he cares for us. In 1 Peter 5 and 6 says, Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. In verse 18 and 19 said, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy and do it forever. The hope to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. This word famine means a great shortage or an extreme scarce of food. Nevertheless, God is the one that provides. My God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever we're going through in a famine, God is able to provide for us. God also sees those who trust in him for salvation, who depend on his mercy for provision. These are the ones who please him. The Bible says when a man ways pleases the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. He looked down on them with favor, a special, and give them a special privilege. Last but not least, 20 through 22 talks about what should happen because we praise the Lord. For one thing, when we praise God, when praises go up, blessings come down. When we praise God, it gives us peace in our life, peace in our home. It gives us hope and the help we need when we need it. When we praise God, it gives us the help. Help means to give assistance or support to someone to provide. Verse 20 said, our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and shield. A shield is something that protects and defends. Our help coming from the Lord. These words have expressed by the congregation in the choir as the song came to an end, a confession of faith in the living God because they had worshiped the Lord. They had peace in their life. And today in our life, when we worship God, it will give us peace in our heart and could quietly wait for him to work. Their hope had been stricken, and they looked expectantly for him to accomplish his purpose in them, through them, for them. They had confidence in the Lord that he will send help when they needed it. And today in our life, when we need help, God will give us the help that we need. He said it in his word in Psalms 40, chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And verse 21 said, for our heart shall rejoice in him because he have trusted in his name. Philippians 4 and 4 said, rejoice in the Lord always and again rejoice. We ought to always rejoice in the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength and put our trust in him. Worship should not only strengthen our inner peace and power, but increase our hope and give us a greater confidence in the Lord 
it should also increase our joy along with the blessing we find faith and we behold the beauty and the glory of the worship of the Lord. In verse 22 is saying, let thy mercy, of, O Lord, be upon us according as we have hope in thee. Mercy means a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion. Hope is a desire with an expectation of fulfillment. Glory to God. And Jeremiah 17 and 7 said, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and hoped that the Lord is. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, the final verse of this delightful song, as an appeal for mercy. The summer appealed to the Lord to show mercy upon us according as hope in thee. And Lamentation 3 and 22 said, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion fell it not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hebrew 4 and 16 said, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We need God's mercy every day. His grace. We need his help in our life, at home, and on our job, and at school. And right here at San Francisco Temple, we need the help coming from the Lord. This evening, if you are not saved from your sins, and you want to be saved, you can receive the mercy, God's grace, to get the help that you need during the troublous time. If you want that help, you can pray along with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I want to be saved from my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me for all of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I repent. I'm ready to turn around and follow you. I surrender my life unto you. And the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing me and cleansing me. Now, if you have prayed that prayer, you can start receiving God's help, his mercy, and his grace. The benediction is saying, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present to you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen and amen. And we thank you for watching. We pray that each and every one got something out of it. God mercy is great and help in these troubles this time. Amen.